All right. So, uh, with all the whole Devil May Cry 5 thing we've been focusing on and my lack of videos, uh, some of you guys might not have known this, but De uh, De Bayonetta actually got a trailer for a third game. Now, I'm joined by Daniel Dilbert. Um, I guess say hi, Daniel. What up, y'all? Hope y'all like my boy's channel, and y'all better subscribe. I'm just playing, please, but please do. Get my boy the support. And, um, okay, let's get down to it. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the channel for a while now, you might remember Daniel. Uh, a while back, uh, me and Daniel debated Dante vs. Bayonetta. It was like, what, six months ago or something? Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah, I was say. So, um, well, me and Daniel still talked on silence. This is his first other appearance uh, since then, and it's uh, on the Bayonetta 3 trailer. Now, I'm going to turn off the audio just so hopefully things run smoothly. And so, so the main idea here is we're just going to talk about what we think about the trailer, so on and so forth, and theories. So... I'm just gonna let the whole trailer run through once. Uh, assuming everything works good, you guys should be seeing the actual trailer right now. There's no audio, so just look at the trailer yourself. It's a minute long. All right, hope y'all having a blessed one. Hope y'all all having a blessed day, and let's all just have some fun. Mm, are you gonna? I got it was a weird, it was actually a weird freaking day when I was just there looking at IGN and seeing that they actually released the trailer. I, I was, well, I'm not going to say I was asleep, but I was definitely taking care of some college stuff. Oh, God, the essays are a bitch, especially when I dropped on you at the last minute. But when, but finally my computer started, finished updating, and then I realized I got a message from you. And when I saw that you said that there's a Bay 3 trailer, I thought two things. One, either I lost my mind, or two, I'm just going completely insane. Which All is right. probably the same thing. <laughs> Alright. So uh, that was the trailer. Now, a very brief trailer, like roughly 30 seconds worth of actual um, footage. Now, the first time I didn't actually see this, it wasn't until other people started telling me about it. But, um, so I actually didn't realize that Bayonetta got sliced in half at the end of the trailer. I swear, that caught me completely off guard. I have several theories on that, though. Yeah, no, I, I, I guess uh, I guess the screen I was watching on was just uh, a little too uh, dark because I did not see it the first time. And to be fair, on your behalf, there isn't a lot of lighting in the teaser, so. At any rate, well, uh, you want to start off with one of uh, your theories, I guess, or should I just start like talk about it from the actual trailer and then we can go into what you think? Mm, yeah, let's go into what you think for now, because I want to hear what you what you what's on your mind. All right, so a while back um, on this channel, which I do kind of want to finish up before, it, assuming Devil May Cry Five is going to be announced next year, I like to have this finished in case it does, so I can compare later on. But um, while I was working on the hypothetical game concepts for uh, Devil May Cry Five, I was having ideas for a hypothetical game concept for um, Bayonetta Three because. Uh, while this channel mainly focuses on Devil May Cry, we're also kind of the only group of people that actually discusses Bayonetta, at the very least to the power scale on YouTube, as far as I can tell. Uh, so yeah. So the first thing that came to me was, uh, what, would ha what would have to happen in the third game for it to be uh, unique and interesting while putting Bayonetta in a situation we never encountered? Uh, as you guys might have noticed from the trailer, um, Bayonetta is afraid for the most part throughout the trailer, or at the very least that's the implication. Now, my original idea was for there to be a male Umbrim witch whose association was specifically more with death than any of the actual trinity of realities. Mm -hmm. So like a Grim Reaper Umbrim? Yeah, exactly, because uh, the first thing that's not really talked about in Bayonetta as something that's natural is a realm of death outside of Paradiso and Inferno. We never really get to see a Reaper. We do see that the angels in Bayonetta 1 do come in to pick up souls to go on to Paradiso, but I'm pretty sure there's a middleman in there somewhere. Mm, like a third party that we never hear about, like fallen angels or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, obviously, but the main kind of point was that for Bayonetta 3, her opponent would have to be something similar, something familiar to her, like the, like a number witch, a rogue number witch, and something that could give her a challenge. Now, right off the bat, with the imagery of the actual uh, trailer, we see the moon turns red, and we see uh, one of Bayonetta's presumed hair ribbons uh, being sliced in half in front of the moon. 
Now the implications here are that Bayonetta's domain is no longer her domain. Something's taken over it. And as we see going forward, we have a quick little scene of Bayonetta being uh, shredded by what appears to be some degree of lightning magic. Uh, I'm gonna be up front here, it's a little vague. It's very vague because it moves very fast. Now there have been now, I don't know if you visit the Bayo Wiki or not, but there have been fans who have come up with several theories that I have, at the very least, at the very least have found very interesting. Like, for example, this one friend of mine had a theory that, you know, Bayonetta lost the eyes of the world in Bayo 2, so maybe there are two other surviving witches who come to fight her and John as a means of punishing Bayo for losing, the, for losing their, for the, the other witch's treasure. Okay. And... And since she lost the eyes of the world, like, who knows? That might have unforeseen consequences. Like, some fans think that she'll be weaker without it, but I highly doubt that because she was still able to fight ACR to a high degree, even though she was weak, severely weakened from it and lost the eye as a result. Well, are we sure this is going to be a prequel? Hmm. Well, I thought that at first, but then it showed on the trailer, you see the guns, and if you slow it down, you see they're not Scarborough fair, they're Whittingham fair. So a lot of fans think that's either going to be a fake Bayonetta, an, a Bayonetta from an alternate timeline, or alternate universe, or something of that nature. But no, I seriously doubt it'll be a prequel. So the pistols are the ones in Bayonetta 2 then? Oh no, they're modeled after the Bayo 1 pistols, but they're called Whittingham Fair, not Scarborough Fair. Even though Whittingham is a part or has very close relation or similarities to the Scarborough, Scarborough Fair song, no, I still don't. I still highly doubt that this is a prequel, given that state of evidence. Now, if it were Scarborough Fair specifically, then yes, I would think this was either a prequel or maybe we get a sense of like maybe there will be time travel involved. But I highly doubt it. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying because I was looking through a trailer to see where that information was, and it's right there on the barrels. I guess I missed that. Okay, so. So one of the theories is that it's just going to be Umbern witches who just disappeared for a while, came back to sort of fight Bayonetta, so on and so forth. That's what I've heard, and it is an interesting theory, and it kind of ties in with the theme of what I believe is going to happen to someone, because I have, like, at least four or five theories so far. You know, it kind of looks like a familiar is attacking her. Yeah, well, we, well, witches, while familiars are a great part of witches in lore, we haven't really seen anything like that to be carried out. Now, it is a possibility, and I would like to see that, but then again, what would be the point of familiars when they already have demons serving them? Plus, not to mention the gear of the, the Infernal Communicator, which is an accessory to summon the little devils. And not, then again, not to mention we have seen... In the picture or the mural, so to speak, in Bayo 1, at the very end, we see a picture of a little Ceres and a little Jean, both lifting up the tiny little cute fingers and summoning, like, some some little devils. Bayo, Bayo has black ones, Jean has red ones. So, yeah, maybe for me, it's a possibility. I would definitely like to see how they would, how Platinum would approach that aspect of witches and culture. Well, I mean... I, I can see why you would think, you know, what's the point of having a regular familiar if, you know, you can just summon demons left and right. But, um, demons can betray you. True. And, um, while, while I'm not saying that, I mean, it doesn't really strike me that anyone would have a familiar that's strong unless they were a deity. Or maybe then again, if there was a deity, that would probably be a serpent. So, it doesn't really... It's a good theory, but that doesn't really click with me as far as the familiar is concerned. Now, I just got done watching this anime called Strike the Blood. Now, those are some strong-ass familiars, but if we're really going to be going into... If we're really going to be bringing familiars into the, into the, into the fold now, I would just... I would be very, very interested to see that. But then again, maybe we'll see more summables. Like, maybe she'll be summoning familiars and demons. Like, you never know. Uh, and then we have the animation here where she's actually firing her guns, mm -hmm. which uh, is actually a little weird here, because so instead of her just firing multiple bullets like she normally does, after every single shot, she disappears from the frame and reappears somewhere else. Now, actually, they did that in the first teaser. Oh, the so teaser for the first game, yeah. Oh, she's so behind the... Yeah, that's already been done. I, like I said, I thought that was a throwback to the first one. That's why I also thought it was a prequel at first before I saw it. 
the face of a gun. Also, if you also take a close look at her, she's bleeding, and Umbra witches don't really bleed like that, so. Well, yeah, uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, waste magic to turn their blood into roses, from what I understand? I wouldn't really call it a waste, especially if it keeps their wounds closed or something like that to that degree. So, um, but yes, which is, and seeing the blood on her face and whatnot has dropped a lot of people to feel like she's a fake or an alternate universe where witches actually bleed blood instead of rose petals. I mean, it is definitely a possibility, but I highly doubt it. Now, Neo, well, the new version or the version that we saw at the very end of the second game before we saw the title screen for the first Bayonetta, and he has a whole new suit, a whole new clothing, and his hair's long, he's got the mask. I don't know if that's just going, if he's just going to carry out things the same way as before, or if he's going to take new steps because AC or Luke Tier knows what's going to go down now. Because he's tried to change it in the pet things in the past, but it didn't work. So maybe he'll do the same thing, or maybe he'll do something different, or in the new version, or as I like to call him, Neo Balder will take new courses of action. Like maybe he'll just like I don't you know, I don't know. Like maybe he'll just come up. We might see him again. It is a possibility because we've seen him in the first two games, and he is like a very prominent character in the ba in the Bayoverse. So maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Okay. Um, but a new antagonist would be nice. And I would, I mean, don't get me wrong, I live for Balder, but at the same time, in between time, I would still love to see a new woman face, like maybe even a female woman. Okay, so we get a brief look at this uh, entity. Uh, it's and, so, let's take a look and see what we can see here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, yeah, Grim Reaper theory kind of holds up because a lot of people have been speculating that that figure that she's fighting would be like Death himself because of this. They think it's a the face or the shape of the face or the appearance of the face is like a skull. Okay, yeah, so I actually froze right here and I was about to say actually uh, the features on the actual thing's face uh, definitely look like a skeleton in nature, like a skull. Mm hmm. Uh, so I can definitely see that. Uh, it looks like it's... So what it looks like right here is it has two hands being raised up. And you can see what looks very briefly, like maybe a bit of red for eyes. But no, that definitely looks like a skull with like a robe. And then it tears itself up. And then uh, you just have to make this half. Mm -hmm. Before she falls and disappears into purple energy or whatnot and disintegrates. Now... I'm going to go ahead and give my theories. Theory number one, and I, this is my favorite overall theory, and I really hope it holds true, is that, yes, yeah, she's going to be sliced in half. And, um, like, maybe she's going to be sliced in half, but she's not going to necessarily die because you see in the trailer, like, everything is being split in half, or at least that's the overall thing or concept we're getting through this teaser. Like, for example, you got the whip first, it's the ribbon. Then it's the um. Then it's her guns being separated because she uses them. She form, you know, like how the there's like a moon sigil, like whenever she puts her guns together to block an incoming attack or the ones that she was trying to block, and they're separated. Then the very being itself separate. The astral figure separates, and then she separates, and then her sigil at the very end separates. Once it cracks into a three, there are two prominent halves. So. May and she is a half Umbran witch and she's also a half woman say she's a hybrid so maybe she's split into two separate entities like there are two band that is wandering around lost and confused like one is an umber witch the other one is in her un untapped lumen power and it which i think is a possibility because yes she is also a nun and people disregard that fact it's like a simple thing a side piece of info for the character but i think that can 
like she knows how to call angels down to the earth or lure them so maybe if she can do that much to that degree and as you see in bail one the angels don't necessarily hate her so who knows like maybe she'll maybe we'll actually get some angel summoning in in this game and who knows that she once they're split in half They'll come back together and she'll be able to use both her divine and demonic abilities, making her far, far stronger. And I believe that with all the other games that Platinum has done, like Metal Gear Rising, for example, like Raiden is beaten in the first game in Revengeance. And he even loses his eye but he and an arm, but he comes back stronger with a brand new cyborg body, which makes him massively stronger overall. So maybe they'll try to do the same with Bayonetta. I can see that. Now... As for my next theory, like maybe she'll die or something like that, and John will have to return the favor because she saved her in the second game. But then again, I highly doubt that. Or maybe we'll just. My second theory, which is my least favorite, is like she'll die and then they'll bring in a new protagonist to save her. Like maybe we will get a male Umbran for that exact purpose. And it'll be kind of like Devil May Cry 4 where we get a new antagonist coming in and they play, we play as them for the whole second half. Or something like or something of that nature because they have discussed like maybe playing a new protagonist in a bayo game overall which i really do not want i mean it's bayonetta how are you gonna have to have it be called bayonetta and bayonetta's not playable anyway i hope we see her like don't get me wrong i would like to see a new ally or a new protagonist into the fold but i would not like it to be presented in that way especially like the way they did in dmc4 unless they're unless they're in the fourth bayo game appropriately around Dante, there was a whole bloodline situation going on throughout the games. So, for Bayonetta, if there was going to be a second playable character, my money would either be on uh, Roldan or uh, John. Very, very true, and Camille has been wanting to do a John spinoff on the Ninten on the little Nintendo consoles for some time, so who knows? And, um, another... Plus, we never really know how what she was well she was brainwashed to control for those past 500 years while Bayonetta was sleeping. But other than that, we don't know anything else. And um, but like I said, I hope really hope it's my first theory that holds true. And like the third theory is like, for example, there's we either see a time skip, like maybe Neo Balder, as I've called him, will actually try to do things differently. Maybe he'll try to kill her overall, but then again, he won't be able to use both eyes of the world to bring himself back to his former glory or resurrect Jubileus like Balder cheated and like tried to attempt to do in Veil 1. Maybe it's something of that nature. Basically, my overall desire is that she is able to summon both angels and demons in this quality, which is why I hope... I would actually like to see how she does that because we don't really know how the Lumens summon angels other than the fact that they use feathers like the masked Lumen did in the second game. Like, I'm sorry, go ahead. It looks like rather it's playing itself apart, it's just launching uh, an energy attack at that point. And that's what ends up taking out Bayonetta. But if it's just a, a corporal construct, I am going to be very curious to see what the backstory is there. Because uh, when it comes to teaser trailers, uh, things change, unfortunately, when it comes to these sorts of things. So for all we know, this isn't even the final design, or this isn't even the final intention of the actual creators. Hopefully not, because I want a new suit, a new hair job, and some purple guns. Well, for sure we know, sure know Bayonetta 3 will be on the way. Um, I'm just hoping that this trailer sticks relatively consistent with what we're going to be getting later on, because I have seen uh, intro trailers that kind of radically change or are radically different from what the game actually turns out as. True, and a lot of people have been speculating that this was a rushed little CGI teaser trailer because of a, a supposed leak that happened a while back. Oh, but I don't know. I know, right? But I'm actually looking forward to Devil May Cry 5. Who knows? We might even get it. This might even be a two-part cross. Now, this is my third theory. Like, maybe it's a two-part crossover, like Capcom and Platinum, because Hideki Kamiya and, um, damn, I forgot that dude's name. The dude, one of the Itsuno. big dudes responsible for, hmm? Uh, for Devil May Cry, just Itsuno's the main guy. 
yeah, it's you know he and Hideki Kamiya still chat from time to time, and they still hang. They even go to bars and get drinks and talk about this kind of stuff. Like, and they've even said, "Let's do it, let's do it." And but you know, they're just rambling and drinking and whatnot. But I actually, I might mean, actually really love a crossover as long as the dudes from um, who did the reboot don't do it. No shade, but and don't get me wrong, I live for the reboot. Is the gameplay is awesome, and I I kind of like the character. I don't think he's all that bad, but. Uh, yeah, I don't really want the reboot interacting with Bayonetta. I'd rather have the original classic Dante and her interacting. And, well, yeah, I'd kind of like to see where they go with it. I'm just kind of hoping that if this that the trailer stays true, I can definitely see this as being kind of a rushed job. We don't really get a lot of information whatsoever. And, um... What really kind of makes it sound like a rushed job is the ending of the trailer that shows Bayonetta's legs, just uh, her being cut into pieces like that. Because that definitely, it's supposed to show that Bayonetta is in danger this time, but kind of hard to believe that a company, especially like Nintendo, would let a character die just outright like that. Well, they did let John die in the sequel, so... I mean... Died's a strong word. They literally just kicked her soul off her body. She was basically like, it was like her shin got kicked, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, uh, well, at this point, I don't really have much more to add. Uh, it is a really short trailer, unfortunately, but you know. I actually think that the entity that she was fighting was Ombra and Elder, given the garb that they appear to wear and the purple flames and whatnot. And um, it basically goes, like like I said, she lost the left eye, so there's no telling what kind of unforeseen consequences that might have or what gifts it could have. Like, who knows? That losing the eyes of the world might be a blessing in disguise. Maybe she'll get stronger. Maybe she'll tap into new powers that she couldn't because the balance need to, needed to be kept. Who knows? Yeah, okay, I feel you. Like but yeah, I mean, and really, that's all I've got to say now. Yeah, not really. Like, who oh knows? Maybe it's. Oh, wait, wait. Let me take that back because who knows? Maybe, um. Like, the end boss fight, like, at the very. The final boss has to be, like, Queen Sheba because it, that makes the most sense because Jubileus is. Jubileus and ACR are both out of commission. Loki is still waiting to be reincarnated, assuming he is not that baby in the carriage at the end of the second game. And, um, the Trinity of Realities. Are complete. The other two realms of the Trinity are completely unguarded, and um, the eyes of the world are gone. So there's no nothing really keeping the balance anymore. So this is the most optimal time for Queen Sheba to capitalize and try to take over everything. And I can I really see that happening. I mean, it makes sense given that we've already gone to we've already faced Paradiso, and then you face uh, apparently a brand new faction in the form of Chaos. So, I definitely can see the third game focusing a lot more on Inferno and Queen Sheba's actions going forward. And that definitely seems like a valid option. So, the question would become right here is, are we seeing Queen Sheba sort of acting through a proxy? Which is possible, but I mean, the purple kind of seems to imply Umbrin, which... But she's fought of her witches before, like... Like before, she's fought John, and then she's fought the masked woman. So who knows? And who knows? Maybe we might get more than one um, rival to fight between boss fights every now and then in this game. But besides, how she's going to—I'm really interested to see how she's going to be killing and finishing off the demon bosses in this game. Because who knows? Because I don't really see her summoning Queen Sheba to kill Queen Sheba. Like, maybe once she, maybe if my press theory holds, she'll be able to summon Omni to finish the job at the very end of this trailer. Or maybe she'll summon a new, because Jubilees, Aesir, and Queen Sheba are three entities of the same being. And Omni is proof of that, because she's half Jubilees, half Queen Sheba, half light, half darkness. Maybe we'll get a new, like, few upper higher deity, a new fusion de fused deity. Like, maybe we'll see Bayonetta, maybe we'll see Bayonetta summon a deity in the form of half Jubileus, half a seer we never know and um or maybe she'll just summon Jubileus on her own because like i said she is a hybrid and she should be able to summon angels 
especially if they're especially if my first theory holds out and they're split down the middle and she's able to tap into her lumen sage abilities i would like to see how and plus the angels really won't have much of a choice because julius is gone and Baldur is dead so and they don't really hate her hate her like yeah she's a witch but then again with Shiva taking over the trinity they're going to have to fuse behind some kind of proxy or, or some kind of strong ally and maybe they'll fuse with Bayo's Lumen half. And when she come and when the two halves come back together, maybe she'll be summoning angels and demons, like and be, thus becoming far stronger, having both her both parts of her heritage, both and both their both of their um gifts and abilities given to her, she'll become a much more powerful entity on herself far down the line. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean I feel you, but uh, we still have Father Rodin. That's still, uh, that's still in the cards. Who, based yeah. on the actual lore of the game, would be, seems to be at the very least in the same role of power as Queen Sheba is. Well, I don't really see Bayonetta summoning Rodan, and I don't really see Rodan having a reason to really do anything because while he doesn't really have much drive to do anything other than sell weapons, and I get that the two of them aren't really like friends, friends, but they're associates and they're business associates like he she gives him halos he gives her weapons that's how their overall dynamic works but radon has stated before that he does like her otherwise he wouldn't do a lot for her and they do fight together in the second game on their way to the same destination and even and still she's beat him twice already even though a lot of people don't necessarily consider the radon fights canon i mean truth be told uh, i don't consider anything you can't do in the first playthrough as canon unless specifically there's a reason uh, for it. Like, if it's locked behind um, beating the game, then I can talk, then we can talk him afterwards. But uh, from what I understand, there's just no way outside of a glitch or something that you can get enough halos to buy the platinum ticket in one playthrough. Or you can, there's always halo farming. Is that like, without like, messing up the game or anything, you just like, leave a room then come back? Yeah, you can say that. You can say that because I've seen it done multiple different ways. And for example, you can get, did you know you can get a million Halos in the um, second game with Jean, but you have to play her in the, um, what is the name of the chapter where they use the mix to the overall chapter? I forgot that one. The Witch Hunts or something like that, I believe. Uh, the, I think that is the Witch Hunts one. But yeah. Like I'm saying, I still, I would still, love, I still love to believe that the uh, Radon fights are canon because necessarily you do get a new weapon, and Radon has stated that she beat him before in those fight scenes because. Well, yeah. Like um, it's kind of like this: the fights canon if you do it in both games, but in the overall canon, it doesn't seem like it's canon. Uh, I would definitely have to ask the creator. Uh, someone should definitely ask Kami on that one if the fights are actually canon or not. I feel like he said at one point they weren't, but uh, I could be wrong on that one. But I, I definitely think that's a question someone should ask whether or not the fights actually happen or not. I'm gonna tweet him. Yeah, because that could definitely uh, change, I think, in my opinion, oh? uh, how powerful Bayonetta is if she can fight someone like Rodon. Wait, you said that a what? Can you please say that again? I didn't hear that part. Uh, basically, we, we, kind of need, we kind of need confirmation on the fights for them to be canon, because outside of exploiting the game, you can't perform the fight on the first run through. Yeah, but you, but what was the last part you said, because it would drastically change our outlook or something like that? What was that? Okay, basically, if she could defeat people like Roldan, uh, canonly, it would probably make her more powerful overall in comparison to power scalers, because we would have clear definition source that she can defeat a being who stated to be close to Jubileus in power. A full power of Jubileus. Uh, yeah, I won't necessarily argue with that for now, but yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold you to that. But okay. And um oh I Becky Gamia just posted something. I'm so excited for Bell. Not a fan of the one, two, and three. Can just switch. I just have to draw. <laughs> That's a good picture. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tweet it. Becky can be it. Uh, what did he read? I think that's about 
uh, all we're going to talk about here in terms of the video. Oh, there you see me now. It's a blood. So, uh, thank you guys for your time as always. Uh, have a nice day. Since this will most likely be uploaded tomorrow morning. And uh, I guess let me know what you guys' thoughts are about Bayonetta 3, so on and so forth in the uh, comments down below. Peace.